It is August 23rd, 2023. Totally, totally devastated. You know, the term um, wrestling God is thrown around so often. This guy's a wrestling God. That guy's a wrestling God. But most of them, they, they don't come to that level. They're not a wrestling God. And today, August 23rd, 2023, we have lost a real wrestling God. And we're talking about one of my dear, dear friend, Terry Funk. When I heard the news, when I read uh, Mick Foley's post today, I must have sat in my car, tears, for quite a long time. And it just, like with Mick Foley, it just, it did it. it it didn't go through here. It didn't, it just didn't make it, it, it couldn't be. Terry Funk could not have died. But, uh, but it's true. So now, hours later, what time is it here in Aptor's Alley, 6 51 p.m. on August 23rd, Eastern Standard Time? I uh, just want to put my thoughts out there and, uh, so, yeah, tell some stories about Terry Funk and, and again, a wrestling legend, a wrestling god. I remember so many of the interviews I did with him back in the days when there were no video interviews. Um, Miami Beach Auditorium, Chris Dundee, the promoter, took me backstage and introduced me to uh, to all the wrestlers very early in my career. And one of the guys who came right over to me was this guy in a, uh, he was wearing one of these. Yeah, I don't look, I don't, Terry might have appreciated that, but um, he was wearing one of these and uh, uh, he said he was Terry Funk. I knew who he was because I was always, uh, not always, but I had been working for the, uh, for the magazines at that time. And uh, he was super to me. We talked about, uh, and it wasn't shoot stuff. It was all angle stuff about uh, Gary Hart and Jack Briscoe and Jerry Briscoe. And so it's when wrestling was protected and you did interviews, not asking about uh, the business at all. Well, we we hit it off that day. We went out um, that evening. We went out for breakfast the next morning. And uh, I'll never forget, we walked past this, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, not an IHOP, but uh, the Pancake House in uh, right somewhere in, uh, in in Florida. And he told me, he says, after that's where the hookers all stay. So stay away from it. I had heard he was a big party person. And I said to him, uh, uh, I'm glad to get out with you to party. He said, I don't party anymore after. And we didn't. We just uh, we had uh, dinner, I think, at a Denny's or something like that. And so we stayed in touch on a regular basis. So now I'm going to jump to great times with uh, with Terry Funk. I had uh, met his dad, Dory Funk Sr., in Detroit for the first time when Dory Sr. was uh, wrestling for uh, the original Sheik, not the Iron Sheik, the original Sheik. And I went out to dinner with uh, Terry and uh, Dory Sr. Had a great, uh, great time. And... Uh, that's when they that's when Terry started opening up about the business of pro wrestling. And I not on an interview I did with him, but just uh, uh, in a restaurant with him and his dad and talked about how they built Amarillo into a territory. So it was uh, great stuff because they were teaching me. Terry was young. Terry was teaching me and his dad about certain things in wrestling that I had no idea about. I, I wrote down some notes here just to. Talk about what I wanted to talk to you, uh, to you all about. Um, when my family and I moved to Pennsylvania after living in uh, New York, the magazine company I was working for, Stanley Weston's magazines, were sold to someone in Pennsylvania. So we moved. And when my kids first started school 
in Pennsylvania in the 90s when they started grade school there, uh, one of these school teachers knew who I was and said, could you bring a wrestler here? Well, I knew Terry Funk was going to be on a show, I think promoted by Joel Goodhart. And I asked him if he would come and uh, hang out with my kids and other kids and um, uh, be at the the school fair. And he, he asked me, he said, after, if you pick me up from the airport. We'll, uh, and he was so great to all the kids. And a lot of them didn't even know who he was, except he was a wrestler. And he made a great he made a great impression on them. So thank you, Terry Funk, for uh, doing that. My son recently sent me a photo. I don't have it. Um, well, I don't know. I think it's on my cell phone here. He sent me a photo of that uh, that day at uh, Thomas Fitzwater. Let me see if I can find it. So bear with me for a moment here. Um, might be on my instant messages. Da, 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 da. Uh, that's not it. That's not it. Well, I'll, let me pause this just for a second because I do want to find this. Okay, we uh, um, I'm back. I found the picture, and hopefully you can see this. And this was at the uh, Thomas Fitzwater School in uh, Dresher, Pennsylvania. And that was my uh, young son, Brandon. And uh, everybody just loved seeing, uh, uh, having a, a real professional wrestler there, Terry Funk. So thank you for that. Uh, let me get back to my notes here about some of the, uh, so, okay. So we were in uh, Los Angeles and I think it was for uh, the Anoki Peace Festival. I think so. We were in uh, Los Angeles, or it might have been for another show there. And uh, after going to dinner with Terry Funk, about 3 a.m. Los Angeles time, he calls me on my hotel phone. And he says, after, what are you doing? I said, um, 3 a.m., I'm sleeping. He says, you got to come to my room. I need some help. I said, what's what's going on? He says, uh, I'm auditioning for a part tomorrow for a TV show called Wild Side, and I need someone to cue me. How could I turn it down? I went down to his room, and uh, I played every part but his part, and he remembered all his lines, and eventually he got, the, he got the part. I was also fortunate enough when he was doing uh, the movie uh, Paradise Alley, he introduced me to uh, uh, Sly Stallone. So thank you, Terry, for uh, for doing that. Um, Terry Funk's lovely wife, Vicky, and their two girls were so nice to me. They invited me down to their home and uh, to the ranch in Amarillo. And they took me to the very first rodeo I had ever. I've been to rodeos at Madison Square Garden, but not not a real rodeo like down in uh in, in Amarillo, Texas. And it was great. And his his daughters were in this rodeo, which made it even uh, so more important. And uh, uh, Vicky cooked up an entire meal. And then uh, that night, we were, Terry was wrestling, I think it was Ivan Putsky uh, in a show in might have been Austin, Texas. And we got to the building and the promoter was not a big fan of wrestling magazine she didn't want she didn't want these pictures that it was going to take to be in a wrestling magazine because everybody will know what happened and terry funk told the promoter who he'd been wrestling for for many years if you don't let after shoot the match ivan and i are walking out of here bingo i was allowed to uh shoot the match thank you again terry funk uh oh this was great. Craig Peters, one of the editors of uh, the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Company, I'll call it, uh, and I had an opportunity. Terry was coming to uh, New York to, I don't know, if it might have been an indie show or something like that. And he had claimed the National Wrestling Alliance World Championship. He claimed it. He had a fake belt made up. And Craig and I took him around Midtown Manhattan, Rockefeller Center, for him to pose with fans and 
take him into restaurants with the fake belt. And I didn't know how many people in New York knew him from the magazines at that time. We had a blast. And there were people from Japan down at the skating rink in Rockefeller Center where the huge Christmas tree is. Uh, and oh, they were so amazed to see Terry Funk in New York. Another uh, another great uh, another great moment. One of the moments that I don't cherish with Terry, but yeah, I do, is I went to uh, cover an ECW show where he was um, wrestling Cactus Jack and uh, Mick Foley, and the fans could bring weapons. One fan brought a frying pan in the front row. I was now between Terry Funk and Cactus Jack, and a fan handed Terry Funk the frying pan. Funk looked at me after, boom, right on the top of my head. And I had more hair back then. And I went out, went out like a light. I, I was totally passed out. And people afterwards going, oh, Bill, you faked that so perfectly. Terry Funk thought it was one of the funniest things he had uh, he had ever seen. Um, finally, well, my favorite time with Terry Funk was uh, when he and Dory got me booked in Japan for one of uh, Baba's tours, Shohai Baba, the great Shohai Baba. And uh, the, the first night, um, Haku took me out to karaoke places, and I must have sang at 10 karaoke bars. And uh, next night, I sang my way. And next night, uh, Funk sees me in the dressing room. He says, after I, I understand you're a big singing star, I'm going to take you out tonight to a place that's run by the mafia. And if you don't sing good, they're going to cut your thing off. So he took me to the place. And in the middle of me singing my way, this, what I thought was a gorgeous geisha girl, comes up to the stage and starts rubbing my chest starts practically undressing me and Terry Funk and Ted DiBiase is sitting in the audience hysterical laughing she's now got her tongue in my ear she's kissing me they're hysterical laughing DiBiase finally comes up and he says Terry's got something to tell you Funk comes up he says after I can't go on with this it's a guy ah! they set me up but uh it was a fun time in Japan. I had so many fun times with Terry Funk and I'll miss him so very much because yes, he was a wrestling god. He was a friend, a dear friend to me, a family, extended family to me. Uh, I loved him. I loved his family and I loved telling you these stories and I, um, I, I hate that I'm going to miss him. Um, I'm looking for the stop recording button. Uh, hate that I'm going to miss him so very much. Rest in peace, my friend Terry Funk. And I know you you, you hated, well, you kind of laughed whenever I, I did my imitation of you. But I always said that uh, Terry Funk was, he was one of these guys who, uh, if he could have had an angle to do about his death, he would have uh, done it. And he would have said to me, after that was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah. I wish it just was an angle. Love you. Rest in peace. Terry Funk. <laughs>